Hello and welcome to another edition of Across the States. I'm your host, Matt Fisher, bringing you the premier state policy podcast courtesy of the American Legislative Exchange Council. And it is my honor to be joined today by Tan Parker, member of the Texas House of Representatives, a voice for conservatives in his state, to discuss his new book, Making Government Work. Welcome to Across the States, Tan Parker. How are you doing today? Hey, man, I'm doing great. Thanks so much for hosting me. What a pleasure to be with you and appreciate this wonderful service that Alec provides the country. It's an honor to have you on. Now, I have read through your book twice already because there's so much in terms of what it has to offer. But let's kick things off by just asking the question that all authors at some point have to ask themselves. And, you know, it's not even a question they ask themselves. It's something that just comes natural. What inspired you to pursue writing and assembling the Making Government Work Project? What brought you to produce this work? Well, Matt, you know, the original Making Government Work was done by my mentor, Tex Lazar, who was the Assistant Attorney General of the United States and had an incredible career. He published the original version back in 1994. And uh, God rest his soul, the Lord took him home way too young in life at 55. But his wonderful wife, Mary Spaeth, has been a dear friend all of my life since my time when I worked with Tex as a kid in college. So when Mary asked me to pick up his mantle, and to create a 2020 version for the country. What an extraordinary gift to me and blessing. So I just took the ball, Matt, from there and ran with it and uh, decided to put together a blueprint that was so timely for the present and would address all the major issues that conservatives are dealing with today across the country to put together a truly a comprehensive blueprint for how we move the states and therefore the nation forward. Definitely. So with that in mind, the list of authors who participated in this project, in this book, it's impressive. And what they offer is exactly right in that vein there. And some of the most prominent names on this list include Nikki Haley, Jeb Bush, Rick Santorum across the political spectrum in terms of offering solutions. Now, what impact did bringing so many different voices to the table have on this book, Making Government Work? Well, Matt, look, it was an incredible journey for me to think about, all right, I wanted to cover 23 areas of public policy, right? Yeah. And then I decided, okay, who would be the most powerful voice in America for each different topic? And I literally reached out to each of these individuals. And, you know, once I decided oh, this person would be ideal, I reached out to him. So when I wanted to talk about the Texas model and what it means for the other 49 states, I reached out to Rick Perry. When I wanted to talk about the importance of the Second Amendment and how we protect the Second Amendment, I reached out to Chuck Norris. When I wanted to uh, reach out and talk about economic policy, I immediately think about Dr. Laffer. So that's really what I did through all 23 chapters of the book is I thought about who would be the most powerful voice, and then I reached out to them. And in my assessment, there's no compilation anywhere in the country. There's not a book anywhere like this that is so timely to the present that reflects so many incredible, powerful, conservative voices in America all in one book. And Lord knows the conservative movement needs some unity like this, needs some of those binding things that bring it all together. Absolutely. That's really what the objective is all about, Matt. Absolutely. Now, in the preface of Making Government Work, you write, and I quote, innovation and creativity generated in the states has unleashed public policy that is transforming lives, lifting people out of poverty, educating our children in new ways, reducing crime, creating new levels of economic prosperity, improving the protection of our children and driving medical innovation. Why do you believe it is more important than ever to emphasize the power of states in bringing about change in this area? We often hear the national headlines seem to put the emphasis on Washington, but you offer perspective in this book and with that quote of a better way to more directly address these problems that face all of us. Why should we pursue a more states-oriented solution? Well, Matt, Look, making government work is more timely right now in the present than ever before. Frankly, given the fact that we have a complete takeover by a radical liberal agenda that sadly is coming from the White House and certainly the United States House of Representatives and the United States Senate today, it's more crucial than ever if we're going to have common sense, pragmatic policies that move the country forward in healthy and prosperous ways ways that create jobs and opportunity for citizens and for families, ways that maximize freedom and liberty, ways that grow our economy, ways that you know make the right decisions when it comes to regulatory frameworks and so forth. The only way that you do those things with innovation is through an agenda that is driven by the states. 
So the basis of federalism is the heart and soul of this. Again, at the end of the day, Washington thinks that it created the states. It's just the other way around. The states created Washington. And it's our time now to lead the country forward with a conservative agenda for the states. And so my hope is that, you know, what I've been blessed to put together in making government work is not only policy that we're doing in Texas, but it should be policy that we're doing in the other 49 states as well in order to be able to move the nation forward. And we also recognize, Matt, that when we do great policy in the states, so often I've had this experience in my own legislation package and certainly many things that we've done in Texas, that policy gets adopted by many other states. I've got uh, many pieces of legislation that have been adopted in you know 20 or more states. And when you get to that level of visibility, frankly, working through wonderful organizations like ALEC and word of mouth and the conservative world, well, then Washington pays attention and they'll start to pay attention to what we're doing and therefore hopefully make better policy decisions. Of course, elections play a direct role. We have to get control once again of the United States House and the United States Senate. And I think you need, obviously, a a strong conservative Republican president again in the White House. But until those things happen, we've got to continue to drive the future of this nation with innovation and creativity and a conservative perspective through the states. Definitely, definitely. And now looking at these challenges facing America, you listed them all out there in that passage about, you know, poverty is an issue, education, reducing crime, especially in the recent year, reducing crime all these different issues facing the country, but your book offers so many solutions to these litany of problems. Looking at the challenges we face now and in the near future, what are some immediate policy ideas that you gleaned over the course of writing this book that lawmakers can pull directly and begin implementing right away? And what ideas have you implemented as a representative in Texas to help spur and address these problems? Well, Matt, that's a great question. Certainly a whole lot of content there to that question, but You know, look, I mean, in terms of what is in that book and what is timely right now for the states to pull out, I mean, we can really kind of go from beginning to end of the book. (laughs) Let's talk about economic policy, right? I mean, what Dr. Laffer highlights and working with me on the chapter and making government work is a plan that will truly stimulate our economies and an intelligent tax policy broadly. He goes through and assesses all the different types of taxes what states do it well historically, which ones don't. And there's tremendous nuggets that each state in the country can take away. If you look at the chapter on the proper role of regulation that was written with the former majority leader of the United States House of Representatives, Dick Army, with myself, you know, the reality is, is that Dick talked specifically about that proper regulatory framework and not to get too responsive, you know, or overly responsive, I should say, particularly during a time of crisis and that you got to be thinking about long-term policy implications for decades to come. So again, an immediate takeaway. Dick Trabulsi in the book talks about what we've done specifically with regard to tort reform. Texas has led the country in tort reform. It's been a huge driver of our economy. If the other 49 states would implement tort reform the way we did in Texas, they would all be so much sounder economically, so much stronger. They'd have more jobs for their people, enterprise would be flourishing. So I just share that with you as just a few key examples. You know, certainly another chapter, my chapter specifically on pro-life is written by the wonderful Kathy Ireland. Not only was Kathy, of course, one of the most famous supermodels in history, but she's now one of the most incredible women entrepreneurs anywhere in the world. And she does so much for our wounded warriors. She's got such a strong Christian testimony and such an incredibly powerful testimony about life and the essence of life and creating a culture of life. There are many nuggets and takeaways from that chapter that can be immediately implemented in every state in this country with regard to the way that we preserve and we protect life. In Texas, just this week, taking one of those nuggets, we passed a beautiful piece of pro-life legislation called the Heartbeat Bill. So my point is, is that every chapter has timely content that is relevant and uh, so on the money. You know, I think about my good friend, Rebecca Clayfish, who was the former lieutenant governor of Wisconsin. She talks about the battle with the public sector labor unions in Wisconsin. It's all profiled in making government work. What she and Governor Walker had to endure in Wisconsin to protect the citizens, to protect the taxpayers of Wisconsin. They were courageous and heroic in what they did. 
that story is told in a personal way from Rebecca Clayfish and puts together very clear guidelines and recommendations for how the other 49 states should address the issues around public sector labor unions. And then Bob Woodson. Bob Woodson talks about how we heal our inner cities, what we do to address the challenges right now that we've been experiencing the last six to 12 months in this country. And no one has done more to heal our inner cities and to be an incredible civil rights activist than, than him. I mean, you know, he is an amazing, amazing hero for the country. Bob Woodson said so many amazing things. And when you see that he's got such a strong message around engaging our institutions of faith, as well as the private sector to be able to help bring about, you know, change in the inner cities, it's extraordinary. You look at Chad Hennings, who is an incredible, of course, professional football player, three-time Super Bowl champion with the Dallas Cowboys, and now he's, of course, a member of the Board of Promise Keepers, does a whole lot of work in ministry. He talks about the family as the basic, fundamental building block of our society. And the fact that, you know, we've got to have strong families in order to have a strong state, a strong economy, and strong communities. And so that chapter, there's so many nuggets, again, that are policies that we've implemented in Texas that can be extracted from that book and that chapter and implemented in any number of states across the country immediately. So it really runs across the board. Same with health care. You know, the former U.S. Senator, my good friend Rick Santorum, does an amazing job with Grace Marie Turner from the Galen Institute. We worked on a chapter specifically with regard to how we address health care in a post-Obamacare world. And the thoughts and plans there with regard to the health care choices concept that we put in the book is, of course, what President Trump was advocating for as well in uh, his first term is extraordinarily timely. There's a lot of those items in there that specifically the states can adopt to minimize our dependence on Washington. So that's just another example, but it doesn't matter whether we're talking about healthcare with the Rick Santorum, Grace Marie Turner chapter, or we're talking about educational innovation in the chapter with Governor Jeb Bush and talking about the things that we can do there to drive the ball forward and make a real meaningful difference with regard to school choice, with regard to charter schools, so that our children are not trapped in an endless cycle of not being able to rise above the challenges of their communities, the challenges that they are dealing with. And so the great equalizer in this country has always been education, and it will always be. And so until we adopt and fully understand the lessons that Governor Bush talks about from his Florida experience, we won't fully make the most of educational opportunity for all of our citizens. Definitely. And this book offers a great roadmap from every one of these issues, you know, from healthcare, as you said, with Santorum, all the way to tort reform in Texas, which, as you said a moment ago, Texas has been a model for tort reform dating back to Bob Bullock and Governor George Bush in the 90s. So before we wrap up today, for our listeners, Tan, what are a few things that they should know when they buy this book? When they buy this book, what are they getting with making government work? Matt, thank you. And, and first of all, I want everyone to know that all of the author royalties from this book, all of the powerful voices in the book have all donated their time. They said yes to the vision I put together, and they said yes to participating and writing with me and this putting it all together in this book. And so all of the author proceeds, all of my author proceeds are being donated to charity. That's the first thing I want them to know. 90% of everything that's made is going to veterans' causes in this country. 5% will go to Dr. Laffer's favorite charity around financial literacy for all Americans. And 5% will go to Chuck Norris's charity with regard to keeping kids off the streets and off of crimes, off of drugs and out of crime. I'll also tell you that, you know, again, there's no single compilation of the most powerful voices in America today. I should say the most powerful conservative voices in America today on the biggest topics that we're facing, that the nation as a whole is facing at the macro level, and that the states themselves at the micro level are facing, and that they have the tools with which to utilize here in the book a real plan, a real guidance, a real roadmap for how they can take their state forward to the next level to achieve prosperity and opportunity for its citizens unlike anything they've seen before. And so those are the lessons of making government work that are in the book. And I just hope every reader in America will take the time to pick it up 
It's an enjoyable read. You know, whether or not wherever you are on the political spectrum, I think you'll find it to be extraordinarily enlightening. And most in particular, Matt, I'll tell you this. I hope young people across this country will read this book. It's a major initiative for me working with large donors across the country that will contribute and donate books to America's colleges because there is no better content than to read Nikki Haley, to read Ronald Reagan. We've not talked about that, Matt, but in this book, I am reprinting the original forward to making government work from 26 years ago by none other than President Ronald Reagan. So to read President Reagan, to read Nikki Haley, to read, you know, Rick Perry and Jeb Bush and Dr. Laffer and Kathy Ireland and Chuck Norris and Bob Woodson and uh, so many other extraordinary authors is just an extraordinary opportunity, I think, for our young people to understand what this country is all about and to understand why we can always and must always be optimistic about the future of our country. But we can only do that if we have the toolkit if we have the education and the understanding, we recognize our history and we understand these lessons from the states so that we can deploy these things across the country for the good of the nation as a whole. Well, if you want to have some optimism about America for our listeners, be sure to pick up this book. If you want to learn how to make government work again, if you want to read from Ronald Reagan, Nikki Haley, Jeb Bush and more, be sure to pick up a copy of Making Government Work. Representative Parker, thank you for coming on today. It's been a pleasure. Well, Matt, thank you again so much. And, uh, you know, I do have a website that's out there, www.makinggovernmentwork.com. Of course, it's available everywhere you can buy books from Amazon to uh, Barnes & Noble to Target and anywhere else in the country. So I appreciate the opportunity, Matt. And I please give everyone and Alec my very best. And thank you for all you do and, and sharing these timeless principles around free markets and free enterprise with listeners across the country. Will do. And thank you for coming on today. And thank you to our listeners for tuning in to another edition of Across the States. Again, I'm your host, Matt Fisher. Be sure to tune in next time for more of the Premier State Policy Podcast. Thank you for listening to Across the States, the leading state-focused policy podcast presented by the American Legislative Exchange Council, the premier free market organization of and for legislators. To learn more about our work or to make a tax-deductible donation, visit alec.org. Tell us what you think on Facebook and Twitter at Alex States. The views and opinions expressed on Across the States are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of the American Legislative Exchange Council. The Alec Annual Meeting is almost here and time is running out to sign up. This July 28th through the 30th, join the American Legislative Exchange Council in beautiful Salt Lake City for our 48th Annual Meeting. To register, go to alec.org backslash meetings. We'll see you in Utah.